Hi friends! Welcome again in this tutorial of business analysis. We all know that a business analyst play an important role in the projects. Many of us want to switch our career from testing, development and other roles to business analyst. This business analyst tutorial for beginners is designed to help you to understand business analysis right from what, who and how aspects of business analysis. This tutorial also has some really critical concepts like requirements, requirement documents, and what should we do to switch our career to a business analyst. So let's get started now. So let's take a quick look on the content of this important tutorial. First we will see, what is business analysis? And who is a business analyst? Followed by what does a business analyst do? Then roles and responsibilities and then skill sets required by a business analyst. Then important learning, tools and techniques required for a business analyst. Then we will also understand what's a requirement, type of requirements and then type of requirement documents. Then we will see how can we switch our career to business analyst. And then business analyst certifications available. So let's take a deep dive now. So, friends, what is business analysis? Business analysis refers to the identification and analysis of business problems, needs and opportunities through participation in the SDLC to help achieve the organization's strategic vision and business goals. It is also defined as a practice of enabling change in an organizational context, by defining needs and recommending solutions that deliver value to stakeholders. Now, we know the business analysis process, so the next question is, who is a business analyst? Well, business analyst has become the backbone of every organization. Business analyst is the key role in understanding business requirements and implementation. Business analyst refers to any person who is responsible for performing the business analysis functions for IT system development projects. This includes analyzing business needs, facilitating the elicitation of user requirements, documenting and prioritizing the business requirements, verifying the major project deliverables, business re-engineering opportunities and workflow from business perspective, and facilitating effective communication between business and IT teams. So we know who is a business analyst but what does a business analyst really do? Business analysts often wear many hats as our tasks, activities and responsibilities are always changing. Here are just a few of the things. Analyze business needs. Define a business case. Elicit information from stakeholders. Model requirements. Validate solutions. Project management. Project development. And quality testing. The responsibility set of a business analyst would require him to fulfill different duties in different phases of a project. First is the initiation phase. This phase marks the beginning of a new project and a business analyst carries a number of activities. Cost-benefit analysis of the project. Understand the business case. Ascertain the feasibility of the solution. Help in creating the project charter. Identify the stakeholders in the project. Second is requirements elicitation. It includes, analyze, organize and document requirements. Manage requirements by creating use cases, BRD, SRS. Assess proposed solutions. Liaise and enhance communications with stakeholders. Help in finding the project's scope, constraints, assumptions and risks. Assist in designing the user experience of the solution. Third is execution phase. This phase marks the development of the solution as per the requirements gathered. The responsibilities include. Explain requirements to the IT and development team. Clarify doubts, concerns regarding the proposed solution to be developed. Discuss and prioritize project scope changes and gain agreement. Create beta test scripts for initial testing. Sharing the developing modules with stakeholders and solicit their feedback. Following deadlines and manage stakeholders' expectations. 
resolving conflicts and manage communications with the project team. Fourth phase is monitoring and controlling phase. In this phase, the project is measured and controlled for any deviations from the initial plans. This phase runs simultaneously to the execution phase. Responsibilities of a business analyst in this phase are conducting use acceptance testing and creating testing reports. Gain acceptance of the deliverables from the client. Explain the change requests to the development team. Monitor the development of the change requests. Fifth and last phase is closing phase. This phase marks the closure of the project. The responsibilities are presenting the completed project to the client and gain their acceptance. Create user training manuals and other instructional guides. Conduct elaborate integration testing in production environment. Create final product documentations. Document project lessons learned. Now, let's find out what skills a business analyst actually needs in order to be successful in the workplace. First is analytical skills. A business analyst can become successful if he possesses good analytical skills. To analyze the current business scenario and other competitive business processes a BA must have the skill and knowledge of analysis. They are required to analyze data, the user or stakeholder workflow, and inputs and other documents so must know the methods of analyzing data. Second is leadership skills. Due to leadership skills a business analyst can forecast budget and help the team members and direct them as and when needed. Third is technical skills. Here, technical skill means to have knowledge of all technicalities. Not only in the IT sector, instead of for any sector it is good if the BA will have the knowledge of his field, like if he is from the IT field, then he must know about the operating system, networking, SDLC, database concepts, hardware, and other technical concepts. Fourth is stakeholder engagement. Business analysts are likely to deal with stakeholders at all levels of an organization right up to the CEO. Fifth is problem solving. The ability to think creatively and work collaboratively with teams to solve business challenges. Sixth is decision making. The ability to make decisions around things such as requirement prioritization, scope, assessing viability of solutions etc. Seventh is critical thinking. The ability to understand and analyze problems and find solutions. Eight is good listener and communicator. Requirement gathering is a key part of the role so the ability to ask the right questions and correctly understand the information received is essential. To analyze business needs, goals or objectives suitable technique plays a vital role. There are many business analysis techniques used by the business analyst, let's discuss some of the most important of them. JAD sessions. A JAD is a joint application development meeting. It is an opportunity for stakeholders with different points of view to come together to understand business requirements and brainstorm what the best technical approach might be for meeting the customer's needs. Requirements Workshops A requirements workshop is a structured and facilitated event to discover, refine, prioritize, validate and discuss requirements with the stakeholders. Process Modeling a step-by-step -step description of what one or more business users does to accomplish a specific goal. Those steps can be manual, paper-based, or software-based. Interviews. A session with one to multiple stakeholders to ask and answer questions related to any aspect of the problem, project, or requirements. Focus groups. A focus group is a way of gathering ideas and opinions about a particular product or service in a collective group environment. User stories. A user story can be described as a high-level statement of a requirement. Stories encourage iterative development and can be refined as many times as possible to reach agreement and understanding among stakeholders. Brainstorming. A group problem-solving technique that involves the spontaneous contribution of ideas from all members of the group. Storyboarding. It's a prototyping technique showing sequence or navigation through a series of images or illustrations. Prototyping. Business analysts use prototypes to elicit and validate the stakeholders' requirements through an repetitive process that creates a model or design of those requirements. Walkthrough. 
Structured walkthrough, also known as business requirements reviews, are working sessions where invited participants review, and discuss a set of business requirements. They are performed to communicate, verify, and validate business requirements, record all questions, comments, concerns, and suggestions that arise during the walkthrough. Lastly, very popular terms, scenarios and use cases. Use cases and scenarios are used to describe how a person or system connects with the solution being modeled to attain a goal. A use case describes the potential outcome of an effort to fulfill a specific goal that the solution will support, whereas a scenario describes a single way in which an actor can fulfill a specific goal. Scenarios are written as a series of steps executed by actors or by the solution that enable an actor to fulfill a goal. A use case describes several scenarios. It's the time to see what types of tools are available for business analysts. Tools help business analysts better collaborate, collect and sort data, document business requirements, use case analysis, workflow management, and prototype creation. 1. Requirements Management Tools. MS Word, Rational Requisite Pro, HP OM, Jira, Confluence, DocuWiki, iPlan, Requirements management software is designed to simplify all the aspects of this task, keeping things organized and, most importantly, making sure nothing is overlooked. Since a BA's job is hardly possible without compiling a variety of documentation, the relevant tooling shows up on a daily basis. 2. Modeling tools. Pencil, MS Visio, Star UML, YUML, Lucid Charts, Axure. This type of tools enables BA to simplify the building of system wireframes, flow and organizational charts, process and network diagrams. 3. Project Management Tools. Microsoft Project, Jira, Trello, Asana, Gantt Pro. As a BA's activity often includes a project manager's scope of work, the associate software also comes in handy. The most complex, and therefore, the most popular are Atlassian's Jira, Trello, and Asana, each of them allows forming a big backlog, planning a sprint, allocating tasks for every team member, and even setting time limits. 4. Wireframing Tools. Balsamic, SmartDraw, Figma, Adobe XD, Sketch, Mach Plus. A wireframe can help to define and clarify things, in business analysis, wireframing is often used to create software prototypes or develop code architecture during pre-production. For a business analyst, requirement is one of the most important aspect which a BA needs to manage. An entire project's success depends on the correct delivery, explanation and articulation of requirements. So we need to understand what is the definition of a requirement. A more precise definition is provided by the IEEE Glossary of Software Engineering Terminology and the Business Analysis Body of Knowledge. Both define a requirement as a condition or capability needed by a user to solve a problem or achieve an objective. They also define the requirement as a condition or capability that must be met or possessed by a system or system component to satisfy a contract, standard, specification, or other formally imposed document. And then requirement is also a documented representation of a condition or capability. Now let's see how many types of requirements a business analyst needs to deal with. First is business requirements. Business requirements are typically high-level business goals and objectives. As per Babic Guide, the business requirement is defined as statements of goals, objectives, and outcomes that describe why a change has been initiated. A typical business requirement example for a large private sector bank can be to automate customer relationship management systems so that they can offer better customer services and the customer response time improves by 70% in the next six months. Then second type of requirement type is stakeholder requirements. Stakeholder requirements are statements of the stakeholders' needs and expectations and describe the features that must be met if the business requirements are to be fulfilled. Stakeholder requirements as per Babic Guide describe the needs of stakeholders that must be met in order to achieve the business requirements. 
stakeholders' requirements are more individualistic. They serve as a bridge between business and solution requirements. Example of stakeholder requirements. In a bank's customer service management project, one of the stakeholders may state the following requirement. We would like to have a mechanism to monitor the response time for each and every customer support request on a daily basis in order to improve the response time. The report should be generated daily, monthly or on on-demand basis. Third requirement type is solution requirements. These requirements refer to the expected features and behavior of the system. Solution requirements as per BABIC guide describe the capabilities and qualities of a solution that meets the stakeholder requirements. Solution requirements are of two types. Functional and non-functional. Functional requirements are the expected features of the system. Features like registering a user, making an online purchase. Whereas non-functional requirements and quality attributes describe how well a system will perform when it is operating. Example, every page should load in 5 seconds as an example of non-functional requirement. Fourth requirement type is transition requirements. Transition requirements refer to the requirements to enable successful implementation of a project. Transition requirements are short period requirements. Once these requirements are completed, these no longer exist. As per BABIC, transition requirements describe the capabilities that the solution must have and the conditions the solution must meet to facilitate transition from the current state to the future state, but which are not needed once the change is complete. Example of transition requirements can be The users must be trained to be able to use the system effectively or previous year's data must be migrated to the new system to generate comparative report. Now let's take a look at types of requirements documents. 1. Business Requirements Document, BRD. Also known as a Business Needs Specification, a BRD is the first stage in a product life cycle. It details the problems that a product, service, system is trying to solve by logically listing high-level business requirements in relation to customers' needs. A BRD is normally prepared by the project manager or business analyst. 2. Functional Requirements Document, FRD. An FRD defines in logical terms, how a system or project will accomplish the requirements laid out in the BRD. Rather than define the, inner workings and specifications, an FRD focuses on what users might observe when interacting with the system. An example functional requirement might be, when the user clicks the OK button, the dialog is closed and the user is returned to the main window in the state it was in before the dialog was displayed. An FRD is normally written by the business analyst or systems analyst. 3. Market Requirements Document, MRD. An MRD focuses on the target market's needs. It typically explains what the product is, who the target customers are, what products are in competition with it and why customers are likely to want this product. An MRD is normally prepared by the marketing manager or product manager. 4. Product Requirements Document, PRD. A PRD is used to communicate everything that must be included in a product release for it to be considered complete. It is written from a user's point of view to understand what a product should do. It usually includes the same content as an FRD, but with, non-functional requirements added. A PRD is normally prepared by the product manager. 5. User Interface Requirements Document. UIRD, AUIRD describes the look and feel of the user interface. UI, of the system. A UIRD more often than not includes mock-up screenshots and wireframes to give readers an idea of what the finished system will look like. It's written by the user interface design team. 6. Technical Requirements Document. TRD, a TRD contains the software, hardware and platform requirements of the product. It includes requirements like the programming language the system should be developed in and the processor speed required to run the system. A TRD is written by the engineering team. 7. Quality Requirements Document. 
The quality requirements document outlines the expectations of the customer for the quality of the final product. Quality requirements might revolve around reliability, consistency, availability, usability, maintainability and customer experience. This document can be written by the project manager or business analyst. 8. Software Requirements Document or Software Requirements Specification. SRS, and SRS outlines the features and the intended behavior of a system. It describes the business's understanding of the end user's needs while laying out functional and non-functional requirements. An SRS is related to the FRD and PRD but written with a specific IT project in mind. An SRS is normally compiled by the lead engineer of the project. This is one of the most discussed topic in the career forums. How can I switch my career from a QA to a business analyst? How can I become a business analyst from a Java developer to a business analyst? Or what should I learn to become a business analyst? So here are some of the steps to transition to a business analyst role. First, learn the basics of business. The very first step to understand is how businesses run and what they do. We also needs to have a good background of the various functions of the organization and how directly, indirectly serve the internal as well as external customers. It also would be a good idea to read up basic books on business strategy, marketing, finance, HR, and operations. Second, learn the business analysis process. Like any other activity, business analysis also follows a process. The best resource, which is available free, is the Business Analysis Core Standard from IIBA. It is a fairly short document of about 50 pages but is very informative. It will give you a good idea about how business analysis is actually performed. Third, learn modeling tools. Business analysts use many tools as part of their work. Some of the popular tools are business process modeling, state modeling, and use case modeling, Download the trial version of Microsoft Visio. This tool is very popular with most organizations. You can also learn other free tools such as Lucid Chart, Bazaji Business Process Modeler. Fourth, get yourself certified. Along with a degree and experience, getting a business analyst certification carries a lot of weight with organizations and also helps the candidate to acquire the requisite knowledge and meet their professional goal. Certification can improve overall performance, remove uncertainty, and widen market opportunities. Fifth, learn the domain of the organization, domain of your interest. There are good resources available on the Internet almost on all domains and maybe within your own organization. Another good advice we suggest is to look for a handbook on your domain. For example, if you are in the retail domain, look for a book by the name Handbook of Retail. Go through the handbook, you will get a fairly good idea about how retail domain functions. When you understand your domain and you understand your organization, your stakeholders' acceptance for you as a business analyst will increase manifold. Then lastly, identify the opportunities where you can volunteer your services and time in supporting the project as a business analyst in informal or semi-formal mode. It would give a great hands-on exposure to the real-time business analyst activities and challenges which would be full of learning. Now let's take a look at the business analysis certifications available which can be a great opportunities to gain knowledge as well as increase the chances to get or grow in a business analyst role. These certifications include Certified Analytics Professional. IIBA Entry Certificate in Business Analysis IIBA Certification of Competency in Business Analysis IIBA Certified Business Analysis Professional IIBA Agile Analysis Certification IIBA Certification in Business Data Analytics IQBBA Certified Foundation Level Business Analyst 
IREB Certified Professional for Requirements Engineering and PMI Professional in Business Analysis. Friends, this tutorial is just an effort to provide an overview of important concepts of business analysis. For those who are thinking or planning to become a business analyst, it should be helpful. Now that you know who a business analyst is, the roles and responsibilities of a business analyst, the steps on how to become a business analyst, you're all set to start your business analysis career. Please write in the comment if you want something similar or different content. And please, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thanks for watching and loving the videos, see you in the next one.